much faster here um, just because all the other problems have had pages or all the other pages excuse me have had problems that are very very similar to ones on this particular page okay so we've got Terrell throwing a 0.2 kilogram football it's in the living room knocks over an antique vase um, and then it bounces off so makes sense that we've got two separate objects the football and we got the vase and then afterwards it would not make sense for the football to like stick to the vase or something like that so we still have two separate objects and it does even tell us that the football bounces back while the vase is moving in the opposite direction so if they're moving in the opposite direction they're they're definitely not stuck together so we have an elastic equation um, elastic uh, collision happening here so it's a good old mv plus mv problem equals mv plus mv so just like anything else, we know that our momentum to begin with has to equal our momentum to end with. So I've got my 0.2 kilogram football. That's where those are coming from. I know that the vase is 0.8 kilograms. So that's where those 0.8s are coming from, or 0.80. And then we know that the football bounces straight back. Well, the football is going, we're going to assume, in the um, positive direction to begin with. So bouncing straight back would be in the negative direction. And we want to figure out um, how fast Terrell threw this football. Right? So we don't know the speed to begin with, but we do know that the vase is sitting still. We know how fast the football is being knocked backwards, and we know how fast the base, the vase, excuse me, ends up being pushed forwards once the football has come into contact with it. So at this point, it's just like any of the other elastic um, collision problems. Go ahead, take it one little piece at a time, combine lyric terms, isolate for your variable, and you end up end up with v equals 6.5. Take that 6.5, stick it back in for v, and make sure both sides equal one another. Um, in this case, there was no rounding, so should end up with something that is spot on. All right. So then um, it asks us later if the football continued to travel at 3.9 meters per second in the same direction, would the vase have to be more or less massive? Uh, well, there's there's a couple ways to go about this problem. Say if I've got a football and I'm throwing that football towards a really light, uh, I shouldn't say light, but less massive vase, it would make sense that the football is just going to knock that vase straight forward, right? If this vase were like really massive, it doesn't have to be big to be massive, but if it was really massive and that football hit it, it would make sense that the football ends up going straight back. All right, so that's one way to think about it. The other way is to realize, well, we know that Terrell's originally threw the football at 6.5 meters per second, so we could plug 6.5 meters per second in for our initial velocity and this time it's asking me for something about the mass of the vase. So leave the mass of the vase out of it, solve for m, which would be the, the mass of the, um, the vase in this point, excuse me. And then after we've gone through and, and solved, we end up with a mass of 0.2 kilograms. And how I got that, and I just take it one step at a time, just like any of the other problems, 0.2 times 6.5 gives me that 1.3. We don't know the mass of the vase because um, we're trying to see is it more or less massive than what it was up here. And then, or would it have to be more or less massive, I should say. And then on the other side of things, we know the mass of the football still. It's no different than before. We know that in this case, it's going forward by 3.9 meters per second rather than bouncing backwards. So that's the difference between these two problems. Um, and again, we don't know the mass of the vase. That's what we're going to solve for. So when we go through, do our little sub pieces of the expression piece by piece, and then combine like terms, I end up with m equals 0.2 kilograms, which actually isn't the final answer. The final answer is a thought one. So would the vase have to be more or less massive than 0.8? Well, 0.8 versus 0.2 looks like the vase would have to be less massive. And this is one that we'll go over in class as well because it is something that's it's fairly, fairly abstract for a lot of people. All right, so let's take a look at number 13. 
Um, to begin with, we've got a 300 kilogram motorboat. It's approaching a dock. Um, person's on it and then jumps off. So to begin with, we have a boat with Isaac sitting in it. And then what happens is he jumps off. So we still got a boat, but now Isaac is jumping off, diving into the water or some, some crazy thing. All right, so to begin with, I have one object, total of the mass of Isaac and the boat. So that's what I'm doing over here. I've got the boat, I've got the mass of Isaac. Together, I've got the total mass. We uh, don't know, sorry, we do know the velocity of the boat to begin with. It is drifting at 0.5 meters per second, so it's just moving in this direction, 0.5 meters per second. You could always put 0 0.5 if 0.5 freaks you out. And then um, to end with, we know that Isaac is jumping off the ship or the boat in that same direction as the travel of the boat. Um, and then from there, We've got to go and solve how fast is that how fast is that boat going to end up traveling backwards when Isaac pushes off of it, traveling at three meters per second. So we've got an explosion happening. We have Isaac and the boat together. So that's what's going on here. It's going at a velocity, and then to end with, we have velocity of the boat by itself, velocity of Isaac by himself. So at that point, it's just like any other problem. Go step by step work through your math, combine like terms, and then in the end you should come out with negative 0 0.017. So does it make sense that the boat ends up being kicked backwards as Isaac is jumping off forwards? Um, and we can't say for absolute certain that it, that it makes sense. We would know that if Isaac's jumping off one direction, the boat is going to slow down. It's going to it's going to change its velocity, but is it going to change its velocity so much that it slows down and then actually ends up being pushed off in the opposite direction? That makes sense in this in this case because the boat is traveling pretty slow to begin with. Isaac's traveling faster, albeit the boat has a larger mass than Isaac, but Isaac's traveling significantly faster than the boat is so it does actually make sense that the velocity is somewhere in the negative direction it's ever so slightly moving backwards um, almost zero right so it's almost that he actually t ended up causing this boat to, to come to a rest uh, not quite though and again go ahead and take this negative 0 0.017 plug it in for v for the boat solve to make sure both sides are equal to one another. If they are, we know that we're in good shape. All right, and then finally, we're going to take a look at Miguel, the 72 kilogram bullfighter. He's running towards a bull. So we have Miguel by himself. We have the bull by itself. And then to end with, Miguel jumps onto the bull. So that's where we end up with this expression here. Mass of Miguel, mass um, of the bull combining because one is riding the other. Uh, Miguel is riding the bull, not the other way around, otherwise that would be awkward. All right, so we just end up taking a look at each one of our little sub-expressions here, solve for each, and in the end we come out with negative 6312 equals 622v. Um, so at that point, get v by itself. How do I do that? Well, currently v is being multiplied by 622, so I do the opposite. If I do it to one side, Algebra tells me I have to do it to the other. So I'm left with V equals negative 10.15. You don't need to necessarily show this step right here. Um, some people will, some people won't. But there it's no different than down here. V equals negative 10.15 is the same thing as negative 10.15 equals V. All right.